The film as a whole is quite intriguing because it, it, it represents the ordinariness of a serial killer. Um, they're not all kind of fictional, larger-than-life characters. Uh, in fact, some of the very, very kind of seedy and, and not particularly um, savoury individuals that you wouldn't, you know, look at twice in the street. Baz represents very much the ordinary person. Okay, when you look deeper, he doesn't have the sensitivity, he doesn't have that emotional side to his life. Um, but that is not overtly evident. He, he is portrayed and seen by others as being an ordinary chap. And this is often the case with serial killers. They just seem to blend in. And that is, as I say, a key factor in why they become serial killers. Because if you get caught, you're not going to commit another one. Clearly, from the outset, he, he objectifies you know, how he's going to go, well, who he's looking for, who his victims will be. These are people he deems to be um, basically useless to society and people who have committed serious crimes and therefore could be dispensed with. With that wonderful added criteria, they have to agree to it and to say, you know, yes, I will, I, you know, I would like you to kill me. Um, that's kind of like very kind of Aspergery. It's very kind of like um, almost um, geeky, not particularly engaged with humanity type of way of going about things, but in a way, an objective way to say, it's not me. I, aren't, I am not doing anything wrong. Look, they asked me to do it and it's helping society. So therefore I am legitimately okay in doing this. That gives him the missionary status as a serial killer, um, but clearly he deals in power and control. He's not particularly a hothead at the time of the crime. He's very cool and dispassionate in the, the um, following aspects of the crime. He is someone who is, if you like, a missionary control type killer. Being in uniform, it's fairly objective. He's in a position of deciding right from wrong. It's part of the uniform. So therefore, he feels that the, he, he's able to make those judgments whilst in uniform because he has the authority that he's adopted. It's, it's almost childlike in its simplicity. Um, but taking it one step further, he's also taken on the role of an extreme police officer, if you like. One who is the kind of Robocop, you know, somebody who is going to be the, the judge and the executioner all in one. And that comes from the, fact, the, the idea that he is, if you like, a super police officer. He's doing his job to the nth degree. The knock on the head is very common amongst many other um, serial killers. Again, I'll just quote the same ones. The Wests, he had a motorbike, motorbike crash and also fell from a balcony. Both cases, head injury, serious head injury. And what you had there was a kind of psychopath with the brakes taken off. So knocks to the head, even if it's a boxer or in the case of Harold Shipman, he's, he's rugby playing, um, this can desensitize the person. It causes damage to the frontal lobes. It causes damage to the forebrain. And these are the areas that make you sensitive to others, planning areas that make you actually a human being and not just an automaton. And the damage to their um, frontal lobes and to Baz's meant that, as you like, that little bit of empathy, whatever little bit of humanity was there, had been suppressed. When it comes to defecating at the scene of a crime, um, this is one of, if you like, a plethora of behaviours that could be, could be seen as territory marking, but they're often deeply rooted in bizarre sexuality, bizarre sexual behaviour to actually, uh, as it were, soil um, the, 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 the scene of the crime to soil that sort of area to, to have, if you like, made your mark um, is something that perhaps a dog would do but it, it's also a key characteristic of someone who, as it were, wants to assert something wants a, a memorable assertion that to be part of them that when they leave the crime scene if you like, there's something of them there in almost a literal term but in terms of their own um, expression that they have marked their scene. And serial killers in general um, do have some kind of specialness with their family. Often they have a special focus on their mother. Um, Baz, if you like, has really transcended that in killing his own mother. 
and, and as I, if you like, isolated him for herself from other serial killers in doing that. Um, often the mother is kept as sacred. Um, with many of the psychopaths, the only sacred individual is themselves um, that they respect and worry about and get empathic about. Um, but the, um, the case of the mother often is also a no-go area. Mothers are often seen as Madonnas, as, as some kind of um, person to be um, worshipped, protected, etc. In the case of, of West and um, Baz, they were just anybody else, even if they were family. Social media, we don't actually understand that well because we haven't had it for long enough to actually fully comprehend its limitations and, and its extent. Um, but clearly you have phenomena such as Facebook, Twitter, which are global and people forget they're global and they're incredibly powerful. Um, politically, a lot of people examine it as being a threat because the political power of social media is actually probably greater than the grip of any individual government. And that, if you like, is seen as subversive. Now, for uh, as somebody who's a serial killer or a criminal in some way, shape or form, to have a grasp on social media means that they do have a grasp on that power, on that ability to solicit um, support from various corners of the world, uh, local and non-local, uh, which can actually seem like a force. So Baz probably had many, many followers because of the actual nature, the stimulating nature of what he was doing, the scary nature of the fact that he seems to have produced evidence that it is happening, um, and that he will have fan club. Brevik and his manifesto, which was, needless to say, available to the media instantly because it was on social media. Um, so when his, his case was reported, it was already there and you couldn't remove it. Um, an interesting aspect to that is that we can't eradicate that his infamy was going to be there for good. Baz's sexual, um, if you like, uh, life uh, as such, um, was clearly, we, we never found the background to this, but clearly his relationship with his mother was bizarre. It was not normal. He was, if you like, mollycoddled. Um, he avoided sex or didn't want it. We were never absolutely clear, but it didn't seem to bother him. He was more concerned with manipulating circumstances, getting along and doing his job. He even avoided um, sexual contact when it was offered on a plate to him. Uh, where it would be no problem. He complained of headaches, he had problems with it, he reacted badly to it, he felt anxious. It wasn't, he wasn't happy in a sexual position and he had no forecasts, if you like, for a sexual life. Um, he did you know, consider the idea that Val might be a housemate or somebody could look after his house, perhaps a replacement for his mother, um, but not actually as a sexual thing and to put that up front whether or not he had designs ultimately is not explicit in the character. But what we do see in the character is someone who avoided, was not comfortable with sex life, but did enjoy power and control and killing, which often goes alongside it. There will always be, if you like, a fan club for no matter what it is and for no matter how bizarre it is. There will always be followers. Serial killers um, are the kind of central focus for a, a swathe of society and a swathe of media at the moment. Um, it, it's one of the commonest sort of program formats to be kind of used, say, on, on Sky, etc. Um, so therefore, it's a very popular thing to have to, to actually be a central focus and say we are, if it were, the supporters of serial killers, if you like, is attracting the, the element in society who say, I don't care, I just want thrills, I just want to seek sensation, I want to be associated with something that's scary, I, want, I, I'm, I, I live a humble and, a, and a, a mundane life, I want something dramatic in my life. And a fan club like this, which is effectively what it is online, um, facilitates this. They are powerful, 
They are charismatic because they have no particular emotional baggage. They represent a strident, confident individual who will stop at nothing. That kind of powerful individual that unfortunately uh, many people find very attractive and seductive. The Baz Meyer um, relationship was quite strange because he actually didn't want anything to do with her. He just saw this as, you know, something that he could, he was rectifying something which was grossly wrong and therefore part of his remit was to ignore any criminality of them being illegal immigrants and let them go. Um, but she followed him. She fell into the role of the person who adores the powerful. She was actually just doing survival. You know, that was, that was her remit, was to survive. And by being close to him, she felt his power was going to protect her. Um, he treated her, if you like, as a housemaid, as a servant, but then seemed to get kind of almost paternal instincts towards her, uh, slightly protective. But at the end of the day, he would have been quite happy if she had taken a bullet for him uh, in the case with Seth, um, if she had had to be dispensed with in order that he survives, I don't think he would have questioned it in that particular role. But that relationship was beginning to undermine his kind of in, impassive, dispassionate view of humanity where he didn't have to get involved with an individual and therefore feel vulnerable. I think he had a glimmer of vulnerability with Maya. And the idea that she kind of brought something out uh, in Baz that um, appeared to be human. I think what she brought out in Baz was questioning his ultimate motive. The idea that he could fit people into a bag and say, you are somebody who you know, society doesn't need, society doesn't want. Then realise he was looking at something that was around the same sort of age and countenance of his own mother and perhaps didn't have those drunken, vicious characteristics. Someone who was, if you like, self-critical. Uh, Somebody who was, you know, um, you know, less less aggressive, less problematic, and perhaps saw something in her that, generally speaking, was lacking in his mother that he would love to have seen in his mother. He may have felt that he could be more human. That this was a way out. That this lady had actually killed herself and cheated him as well that completely foiled all of his plans um, and yet left him riches um, that he probably felt he ill-deserved but took anyway. Um, so I think there was an element of guilt there, but whether or not that was a start for him to stop killing and become human probably was just a line fed to Seth in order to get him out of that chair. I actually like the idea of comedians playing lots and lots of serious roles because they do it so well. And the flippancy and the double-edgedness of, of most of the kind of non-verbal behaviour that you will get with, with uh, comedians will be sufficiently, um, if you like, of two personas. Um, you know, the, the portrayal and the, the kind of sarcastic, wry look at oneself, as comedians often do, um, is perfect portrayal for Baz, who appeared to be observing himself in life, sometimes with a certain amount of whimsicalness, uh, you know, uh, as he carried out acts and, and objectively looked at himself, am I doing the right thing and I did that correctly, etc. So I think it's an excellent idea and it does hark through to that manipulative ability of many psychopathic serial killers to disarm others and charm others with their simple acted humility.